Hi, how are you? A little bit nervous, but mostly very, very excited. Very, very happy that, you know, the record that I worked on like for the past year is finally coming out. Um, worked on it from January to about July, like end of July. And that's when it finally like really finished like shape wise. And from then on, it was just like finishing touches, whether it was production or mixing and mastering. And um, it's just been, it was like half a year of going back and forth between Houston and LA for two weeks at a time, like but back and forth, back and forth. And um, very long, arduous, adventurous, and uh, can't wait for everyone to hear it. It was when we were shooting the music video, actually. So um, we had found a shot that we, like, that I, f basically we were shooting the whole video and there's a scene where I kind of, you know, get the living hell kicked out of me. And um, like, I'm on the floor and I'm spitting out blood and stuff. And like, in that moment, um, Kenji, my um, photographer and videographer, came in and uh, he wasn't shooting that video so he was shooting kind of the process of the video and he was like oh wait casey like let me get a couple of shots of you like while you're on the floor and um we were going through options for album art and um there wasn't anything that really clicked for us and then we were like oh why don't we go through the video like why don't we see like what what there is for the bts and uh the first options were actually of all the boys like that were in the the shot all the shirtless sweat like sexy sweaty men and uh, it, we wanted to capture that like chaos, you know? Mm -hmm. But uh, then we finally saw the shot of me smiling with the blood dripping out of my mouth. I was like, yo, this is, this is where. I'm not a religious person. Um, I've always loved the name Gabriel. I can't really, like, can't really explain why, but um, when it came time to name the record, um, I didn't like, I wanted to name it something memorable, but not something overly convoluted and like it would turn out cheesy and I didn't want anything with like a, a weird backstory. Like it doesn't have to be too deep, you know? The name, I didn't have one. Uh, I think I was like maybe four or five tracks deep and the only songs I had were like Somebody, Touch, Get It and Hell Heaven. And none of them really mm -hmm. captured how I felt about the record. And um, for a little bit of time, I was like, talking to my manager and I got sick of calling it the album. So I was just like, why don't we just call this project Gabriel for now, just as a placeholder. And uh, I started to think that maybe naming an album isn't so different from naming your child. And why does it have to be like any different from that? Like everyone's so intrigued about it and it's kind of, it's kind of great and it's working, you know, like people don't remember it, you know? Mm. And um, yeah, I've, I just fallen in love with it. And then at that point, I was like, what would a song named Gabriel sound like? So uh, that's the, the title track and like, at the very end of the record. So I wrote that song after I named the, the, the album. I'm not sure emotional is the word that I would use for, I, I think definitely more personal than anything. I mean, definitely there's there's still like honest, like emotions like inside of it, but it's not like overly like sad by any means. It's just very like candid. Um, the writing process was largely the same in terms of like me being by myself and like writing the music like in my studio back in Houston. But it was more, I feel like I've learned a lot more in terms of like where to go as like a songwriter in terms of like melody or like cadence or rhythm. And it was very intentionally done so that like, I don't know, I feel like I've just gotten better as a songwriter, like in terms of like how I word things and like where I go melody wise. So yeah, definitely have grown. Writer's block was happening to me, like, I think right after I finished Always mm. and the Trilogy EP, because it started to feel really stagnant and, and like the same, like I wasn't making music that was like pushing boundaries. And um, it just like everything sounded the same to me, you know, I was getting like really fed up with myself. And mm. it wasn't until I met Ely, my executive producer for, for Gabriel over in LA, and um, it wasn't until I started making music with him that it started to feel like I was having fun making music again. Mm -hmm. And um, like, I feel like he really brought out the best in me, like as an artist and like I brought out, you know, the best in him as like, a producer. And um, I, I think collaboration is a really great way to, to help with, with writer's flaw, for sure. And I love them all, like they're my children, honestly, like equally to death. But there is a track, uh, it's track seven, Hell Heaven, that I'm very excited for people to hear. And I've talked about it a lot before too. Um, I feel like it kind of, like the production is so varied. Like I, I just love how much ear candy there is into it. And I feel like it'll be a really special moment when I play it on tour, so. I mean, the K-pop fans are definitely very vocal. Um, it is pretty funny because I'll like, if I post on Twitter and it gets some traction, I'll trend under K-pop and it, which I think is really interesting because I'm not Korean and I don't speak Korean and I don't sing in Korean. 
that the metadata works for Twitter. You know, those fan accounts like engage with certain media, so I'll trend under it, I guess. Um, but yeah, they're uh, like I feel the love like so strongly with 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 K-pop fans. I feel like they're incredibly vocal and super supportive, like with everything that I do. So yeah, definitely feel the love. Still getting everything worked out, but I would love like I I want nothing more than to go to Southeast Asia. I've been wanting to go to Southeast Asia ever since I started like Keshi because like I feel like some of my first like ride or die fans like were from Southeast Asia, and like I it was just the most validating thing in the world to know that there were people like across the world that were listening to my music that I was making in my bedroom like when I started so um, beyond stoked to go and play shows and I, I feel like they're gonna be crazy yeah I can't wait to go to the Philippines I've been dying to go <laughs> to the Philippines I um, there were a lot of Filipina mommies that I worked with back when I was in nursing and they gave me so much love and it just felt like I was a part of their family when I was with them. You know, there's so much camaraderie there. And um, like, I think about them when like, you know, I have interviews for the Philippines or when I, I talk to my agents about touring there, I'm like, oh man, I feel like they'd be so proud of me, you know, to like see me like go and do shows over there. So I can't wait. Thank you so much for your time. Um, I say this time and time again, but like, I would have never believed that like I would have listeners at all and like that, there are people on the other side of the world like waiting for me to come and play shows is a dream come true so thank you so much for your time i can't wait to play for y'all bye guys <laughs>